Friday's got 15 games on. Yeah, that sounds like a lot because it is. Every team plays. Let's take a look at what we can and who we might be able to add to help us, I guess, win our fantasy championship, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and the era of alpha males is over the era of sigma males. Just started, but it's also over because I'm instituting a new era, mu males. And all we do is watch fantasy sports podcasts. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble, also at the mu mail. I'm also at TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we're available on all platforms. Yeah, it's going to be real hard for me to go through this and tell you all of the great things that are going to happen on Friday. There are 15 games on. We're going to talk about them. But as you know, there are going to be things that happen an hour before the game. Five minutes after the lineup's official, the game's supposed to start. There are going to be guys who aren't ruled out, who end up, playing half a game, a quarter of a game, or not playing at all, looking at you, if it's a Zubats and Norman Powell, even though I did sort of know that one. But this stuff is going to change rapidly. It's frustrating. It's also why we say do not play fantasy at this point of the year. Although I do have one league going, it is a roto league. They're fine to go to the end of the year. I think Mitch Casey is going to knock me off there after I was about four weeks. I was eighth in that league, and because I was well below on games played, well, I've pushed up. He is two roto points, three roto points ahead of me. I've got nine games left to play. He has got five left to play. I reckon he's going to end up knocking me off by a point, and it's going to annoy me no, no end. But I reckon Mitch might just pit me by a point there, but it is going to come down and be a pretty close result in the end. We've got uh, 15 games, like I said. We better just get into them. I'm going to talk as best as we can about these games. The first one is the Chicago Bulls, your Chicago Bulls up against the Washington Wizards. Yes, um, the Bulls play today. Caruso, I don't know if he's going to play. Desumu and Drummond are out on Thursday. Drummond will not play on Friday. Very confident of that. Desumu, I don't know. And Caruso is going to play Thursday, but he might sit Friday. The Bulls are going nowhere. Phillips is going to be out. Now, in terms of the Wizards, Kyle Kuzma, shockingly, is out again. We know that. Um, He won't play again this season, I'm guessing. Um, Vukcevic is off the injury report, so that's a W. Rashawn Holmes is questionable. Eugene Omarui is now questionable. Tyus Jones, of course, is out. But Jordan Poole is also questionable with an illness. So there's a lot of things that can change there. But the one that's probably important there is Kuzma's out and Vukcevic is in. So that's interesting. For the Wizards, the sandwich is what I want to watch. Patrick Baldwin Jr., two good games in a row. I would hope that they would prioritize him over Anthony Gill, but I just don't know. But he is an interesting guy for me. And then with the Bulls, there's no drum. They've got no centers, no backup center. So I think they're going to have to go really small. So watch for Javante Green. Um, and Anthony Gill... Might get that boost, but again, if Holmes does play or Omari does play, then Gill will be limited. But what if Holmes or Omari do play? Then, yeah, this is a little bit tough to figure that out. But Gill has played some decent minutes in the last two games. The next game is the Orlando Magic and the Philadelphia 76ers. Franz Wagner is questionable. Gary Harris returns. Tyrese Maxey returns for the Sixers, but Embiid, Lowry, and KJ Martin are all questionable. This is not a back-to-back for Philadelphia, so we do expect that Embiid plays, but Lowry's missed the last two, so I don't know. Again, lots of weird stuff can happen. Wendell Carter Jr. struggled the last couple for the Magic, so just watching him, I don't think that he's anywhere close to a priority or a start in this scenario, but I'd like to get a little bit more of an idea of what he's doing. And then for the Sixers, Bud Heald had one good game recently, but nothing else. But if Lowry is out, do we get more Bud? Probably not. Maybe, maybe that goes to pain. But we always want to watch to see where it trends with Bud. Jalen Suggs continues to get those boosts. If Franz is out, do they go back to Markel Fultz? I wouldn't say that worked particularly well in the last game. Or I'd say Gary Harris probably jumps back in there. And then Cameron Payne likely would get a big boost if Lowry is out. But that's like desperation stuff in deeper leagues. And you're going to hear me say that a lot with these games. Charlotte and Boston. Cool, 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 cool. Do the Celtics need to play anybody in this game? Absolutely not. Now, interestingly, all they had all of their guys questionable for Thursday's game, the Celtics. And every one of them is playing. 
Very interesting. So what we know now is that definitely Al Horford is going to sit in this game on Friday. Chris Porzingis is definitely going to sit on Friday. I would suggest that Drew Holiday is going to sit on Friday. As for Tatum and Brown, up in the air. But you are getting Porzingis and Horford out without any question. Drew Holiday will sit almost without any question as well. So I think we can rule those guys out. Brissett is out on Thursday, but Tillman is playing. So I'll say that Tillman won't play on Friday. And that means you're going to have no Tillman, no Porzingis, no Horford. Well, there's 100% no Horford or Porzingis. Definitely not. And probably not Tillman. For the Hornets, there everyone seems to be okay. Although they did just chuck Nick Richards back onto the injury report as a questionable tag. So beware that. Oh, who do they also chuck Grant Williams as questionable? Man, if they both sit, what on earth is happening? That is Poku moment, but it's also Marquise Bolden time. Oh my God, how yuck is that? I want to watch Vass and Misich because they have pushed Vass's minutes down recently as uh, Obi jumps on the chair next to me and he wants to be brought closer. So I'm going to bring him closer. There he is, the big fella. I told you he wanted to come closer. Um, yeah, they've limited Vasimich's minutes the last couple of games, so that's something we do need to watch. And then yeah, Grant Williams has been getting those boosts, but again, he is questionable. The minutes have been down the last couple. It's a little bit all over the place. For the Celtics, you're going to get, I'm guessing, a big Peyton Pritchard boost, a sizable Sam Hauser boost, and it's probably going to have to be a pretty big Luke Cornett boost, I'm guessing. If Tillman may not play, and Paul Zingas and Horford may not play, there's a lot there for um, old mate Luke Cornett to get up to. Next game, Indiana, Cleveland. We saw the last game from the Pacers on Tuesday, and Obi Toppin played really well. So that's something we want to watch. In terms of injury-wise, Sam Merrill is doubtful. Dean Wade is out again. I don't know what's going on there, but Isaiah Jackson did pop up as having a questionable tag for a hamstring injury. But Obi Toppin, putting up really good numbers. Would he be startable on this day? It's very borderline, but he is playing well. Karis LeVert's also what I want to watch in Cleveland. Um, with that team healthy, he still was okay last game, but he's always going to be more iffy if he's not playing 34 minutes. TJ McConnell continues to do unbelievably well in 20, 21 minutes, so we just keep using him. And I don't really think there's a gigantic boost for anybody currently in Cleveland. There's a little bit for like certain guys, but not really with most of their main guys healthy. The next game is the Knicks and the Nets. I just realized that the Knicks are actually on a back-to-back, so I don't know why I didn't include them on that back-to-back list here, but they are. We don't expect anyone sits out for them in this game, but... We always need to watch that. For the Nets, Finney Smith is out. He's just not going to play again this season, I'm pretty certain. Dennis Smith is out. I think he's also done for the year. And then they've listed Cameron Johnson as questionable too. So we'll see what that means. He's had this toe injury. He's played, uh, what's he done? Johnson's been in, out, in, out, out, in. So you would think that there's a significant chance he doesn't play here. Josh Hart played an an adonising, that's the wrong word, an astonishing 46 minutes last game. We'll see what happens on Thursday, but we keep watching what Josh does. But the thing that we want to watch overall in this whole game is Noah Clowney, who's been playing gigantic minutes. And it's not about, can he block six shots or not? It's not about, does he bring double-digit rebounds? Because he obviously can. He won't do it every game. It's about how they use him. It's about how they prioritize him. It's about how the minutes go. So will he be playing those 30 minutes at Power Fort? Like almost 100% yes. So I'm very interested to see what they continue to do in terms of rolling out Noah Clowney. If we go on to the next game, it is the Atlanta Hawks, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Some very interesting stuff here. We saw, um, uh, well, we know that Jalen Johnson's out for the regular season. He's going to miss the play-in as well. And yet, Krakongu is going to miss the play-in too. DeJounte Murray, I thought, was just resting last game, but they have officially listed him as questionable in this one. So that's an issue, obviously, with a quad contusion. They also can't really move anywhere in the standing, so I guess there's no real need to push him. DeAndre Hunter is returning. Wes Matthews is out again, though. Seth Lundy is out. And Adrian Griffin Jr. has actually been upgraded to questionable. But the big story, which I've buried here, is that Towns is back. Yes, he's officially questionable, Townsy. But Woj said he's expected to return. So he's returning. Like, he is going to play. He's going to be, I'm guessing, on limited minutes. I added him in that Roto League. I stashed him a couple of days ago onto my IR. I'm not certain that I activate him for Friday, but I'm almost certain that I will on Sunday and hopefully get something out of him there. Trey Young returned. He was perfect in that game coming back, but limited minutes. We'll see what they do in terms of your minutes in this one. And what we do need to watch is Nas Reed was dreadful last game in terms of percentages. Towns returning, does that mean Reed immediately moves to the bench? You would think yes. And then he's back to a 25-minute guy, which probably isn't must roster. We will see. So I would think with Jalen Johnson out, Vic Krejci gets the boost. Now, will they start like... Will Bogdanovich continue to start? Or he'll come back to the bench and you go Trey, DeJounte, Hunter, Krejci, or Krejci, Hunter... Or do you go trade DeJounte Bogdanovich Hunter? 
Not sure, but Krejci's going to get a boost. And Nikhil Alexander-Walker gets some boosts as well, just because he's playing well and he's outplaying someone like a Kyle Anderson. And that is delivering some pretty interesting production uh, for him at the moment, which we are... We always love to see, not that it's always uh, useful, but we do love to see it. Today's episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get when you wear something that looks good? You look in the mirror and you go, man, I am absolutely sizzling. And you feel good, right? But some of us, we don't always have A, the time, B, the stylistic inclinations to find the right clothes. That's where Stitch Fix comes in. You get access to a professional stylist who can upgrade your wardrobe for this coming year to get you the new on-trend favorites that make you look that sizzling good all the time. The stylist will send you the pieces that you need. You send your style preferences, your size preferences, your budget preferences, and they send you a box with five different items in there. It's not a subscription thing that comes every month. You just tell them, hey, let's get something cracking. They send it through. You've got all the details. They've got all the details. They've got your measurements, and they send it all through to you, and then it comes, and you look at it, and you go, man, what a great job they did. But if for some reason something slightly doesn't fit or you're not 100% happy, well, all returns, all shipping, it's always free. So if you don't like it, you can return it, you can exchange it. Easy done, easy process. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That is stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. Oops, wrong button. That's what she said. Today's episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning those fantasy championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain that vehicle and level it up to the old peak performance. Superchargers, the roof racks, really get the speed running with those streamlined roof racks. Exhaust kits, LED headlights, not too bright, don't get blinded, and more. Speed, power, style, you know what it is. eBay Motors has got you covered with all that stuff. So with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, or honestly, if it's actually your number two, your car won't know the difference that eBay Motors won't either. So if it is your number two car, you can still get those parts from eBay Motors. You don't need to have a level of hierarchy with your vehicles all the time. eBay's also got guaranteed fit. It works for your number one and your number two car. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back because with eBay Motors, you know what you're doing? You're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors guaranteed fit is only available to US customers. Okay, so we're going to go through um, we're going to go through the rest of the uh, the games now. But as I say that, the Hawks literally just now have also added Clinker Pella onto the injury report as questionable for rest. So that is just a massive, massive Bruno Fernando opportunity for that game. Massive, if that is in fact what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, that game is going to be pretty disastrous in terms of randomness, I think. Next game, Denver and the Spurs. Cool. So San Antonio and the old... Um, and the Nuggets. The Nuggets obviously crushed the Wolves in that game. Not crushed. They, they were pretty comfortable in the game that was highly competitive. I went ahead and predicted that Calvin Johnson would be out. He is. What a shock that is. But interestingly, Victor Wembanyama is not on the injury report, so he's ready to go. Don Barlow is out. Chetty Osman is out. And the Nuggets are listing everybody. Listing everybody as probable. All the starters as probable. Now, they've done that many times. When you list it as probable, you're usually okay. They're going to play. I don't know why they bother with this, but Porter Murray, Jokic, Gordon, and KCP are all probable, as is Zeke Naji. They're all going to play. You would guess on Sunday. They got What the schedule? Spurs and Grizzlies they play. Um... I guess Wemby playing will make it a little bit more competitive, but we are going to see, I'm guessing, limited minutes for a lot of these Nuggets guys here in this one. Peyton Watson was ridiculous last game. I want to see him in that Memphis game on Sunday, start, play 35 minutes, and go 18 and 12 with seven blocks. It probably won't happen, but I also want it to happen. But that's not for this game because I don't think that's going to happen. I wanted to see Zach Collins. I wanted to see, A, whether Wemby will be out, what Collins could do, but now that Wemby's playing, will they do any crossover there, or is it just all going to be Mama Kalishvili? In terms of guys getting boosted, Christian Brown's been getting 25, 26 minutes a night. He's thrown down three dunks in a quarter in the last game. We still don't love it as a fantasy option, but he is getting the boost. And the guy to watch, I think, for San Antonio, just as they try to ramp someone up and get a little bit more production into him, I think you've got to look at um, C.D. Sissoko. Now, I say that, I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, what, 10, 4, and 3 last game? Just let's see if we get, there's going to be, I think there's going to be one of these two games that C.D., has enough value to be a 12-team guy. Now, we probably won't know that before the, the fact where it happens, but he is a guy that I believe is going to get boosted. Milwaukee and the Thunder. 
All right. We know injury-wise that Giannis is out. We know that Middleton is back, but Damian Lillard is doubtful. So the Bucs are sort of just being cautious with guys. AJ Green is out. Marjan Beauchamp is questionable. Lou Dort uh, missed the last game for rest. He's fine. He'll be ready to play. He's actually off the injury report. And the only guy that is on the injury report is Hall Pass legend Lindy Waters III, who is questionable to be playing in the G League because their G League finals are on. So Patrick Beverly, I think, is basically a must-roster guy at this point. No Lillard, and he's been starting. I mean, there's, you use plenty of value for him. The guy I watch in OKC is Case and Wallace, but they they are looking fully healthy. But they could, like they did last game, sit Chet in the second half or play 25 minutes of Shea and let Wallace play 26-27. Bobby Portis is going to get a big, big boost. They started him in place of Giannis. He's going to do a million things with no Dame, no Giannis. He is going to do everything. And you love that if you've got Portis. And then Josh Giddy continues to be much, much improved, sort of out of nowhere. But that's cool. Toronto, Miami. Is the next game up? You reckon this one might be a bit of an annoying game? You're probably right. But two of the guys that rested last time out, Olenek and Barrett, are back. But two of the other guys that rested, Brown and Trent, are questionable. So I would suggest that Bruce Brown does not play in this one. Trent, I really don't have a good feel for it either way. But I do think Brucey will be out. DJ Carton, we're just going to rule him out for the year. I think Duncan Robinson's out for the year as well. He's definitely out of this game. While Terry Rogier's neck problem persists, he is questionable. So Robinson will be out. If Rogier plays, he will start. Otherwise, it'll be Caleb Martin. For the Raptors, last game, he came off the bench, but Javon Freeman Liberty played well. Is that something that I can trust? Of course, it's not. He's Javon Freeman Liberty. But we do want to see how they utilize him here. Well, for the uh, Heat, it's safe to say that Bam Adebayo was one of the worst performances you'll ever see in the last game. He has been low-key. Bad is a relative term. And when I say bad, it's look, what are the expectations for Bam? He hasn't really hit it. And honestly, everyone defers to the Heat all the time. Jimmy Butler, well below expectations. Bam, well below expectations. Like, consistently. So let's see Bam do something better. In terms of guys getting boosted, we saw a lot of minutes, and we got a lot of dick shots. Now, Grade A was really good in the last one. He shot well. He hit threes. But he did nothing else, and that's my worry with him. If I saw Trent and Brown out, then yeah, I would probably get Dick in to my lineup in that scenario. But even then, like, uh, it's very, very hard to trust. It's hard to trust Dick from Canada. That's what I've been told. Caleb Martin does get the boost, but do you get solid production with him? Like, not usually. It's up and down. It's inconsistent. And it's not something you want to feel, uh, you want to feel, um, rely or rely upon. For the Lakers and the Grizzlies, this is, um, could be pretty disgusting, I'm guessing. When I created this graphic, I didn't have the injury report, but we do now for the Lakers. And what we do know is that LeBron is officially questionable with the ankle thing again. So the illness is fine. He's going to play. No worries with that. Anthony Davis missed the last game with the eye problem, which then led to a headache and nausea, but is 100% not concussion. Just random concussion symptoms that aren't related to concussion after a head knock. Just a crazy timing coincidence. He's probable to return here. And the Grizzlies, This I there are certain things that happen across the NBA and across media which absolutely confuse me. Last season, we saw the Mavericks get fined for tanking, for resting those two games, for because they weren't, they weren't going to make the play in any way, let's be fair, and it made, meant they kept their draft pick. We saw that, they got fined. There's no peep at all about this team and what they've done. They've been tanking since January. Right? They have been tanking since January. We know this. This injury report is just an absolute joke from this team. But like I tweeted out and someone said, yeah, but all, it's, the difference is all these injuries are real. They absolutely are not. I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. These injuries are not real. Are some of them real? 100% they are. Ja Morant's injury is real. Yes. Desmond Bain's ankle sprain, it was real. Was it grade three like reported? Probably not because he came back too early for a grade three, but I, I don't know. But these injuries are not real. Santiago Dama's foot soreness is not real. Luke Kennard's knee injury management is not real. John Conchar's plantar fascia management, not real. Brandon Clark with a hand contusion. This is not a back-to-back. Brandon Clark came back. He's played six games and they just said, you're not playing anymore. What? So he's out again. Lamar Stevens, who played 37 minutes last game, is now out again with a groin issue. Is that real? No. Could Derek Rose have returned? Probably. I don't know what's happening with Yuta Watanabe, but he's dealing with personal issues. He's been out forever. What about Marcus Smart, re-evaluated four weeks ago? Should have been re-evaluated four weeks ago. Haven't heard a single thing. Should, could he be available to play? I don't know. The thing is to say that, yes, some of these injuries are real. Nearly all of them aren't, though. 
They're all fake. They're all garbage. But that's who we have out. No Jaron. Well, they'll, I didn't even talk about it. Jaron Jackson's injury right now. Fake. Desmond Bain's injury right now. Fake. Well, let's just say highly, 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 highly exaggerated. So there's no Jackson. There's no Bain. There's no Vince Williams. There's no Marcus Smart. There's no Ja Morant. There's no Santi Aldama. There's no Luke Kennard. There's no John Concha. There's no Brandon Clark. There's no Zaya Williams. There's no Lamar Stevens. There's no Derek Rose. There's no Yuta Watanabe. I feel pretty good in telling you that Jordan Goodwin will be available for this game. I Again, we don't have the official number. I've got a pretty good idea of the official number, and I believe that he plays. I also believe that Trey Jemison has to sit one more game, but I don't know that for sure. So just be aware of a random inactive status for Trey Jemison. I don't think it'll be this one because Lamar Stevens is out. I think it might be Sunday, Stevens plays, Jemison's out. Watch that. So all of that stuff. What are we watching? Well, we were going to watch Jackson Hayes for the Lakers, but AD is playing, so we probably don't need to pay... A huge amount of attention there. But again, Jordan Goodwin and Scott Pippen are the two real guys that I'm interested in. I'm definitely looking at Pippen. I'm definitely looking at Goodwin. Now, the problem I have with the Grizzlies is that the last two of the last... Well, today's one, I had Luka Sharmic as the cover guy for the stream. The day before, Jordan Goodwin, he got inactive the game before. or He got inactive for that game. The day before that, I had Malginia Pereira as the cover guy for the streamers. And then he got, like, waved. So... We'll see how we go, but I do think Pippen and Goodwin are the two guys we really do want to focus on here for the Grizzlies as having that big boost. Jemison also, um, I would have liked to look at Jake LaRavia, and I probably still do, but Lamar Stevens is out, so there is a boost there for Stevens. So there are some big opportunities for a bunch of guys, and Rui Hachimura continues to get his boost because Vanderbilt and Wood are not returning in this regular season at the uh, at the very least. And that's a lot to talk about because there's like 20 guys on that injury report. And again, don't feel sorry for the Grizzlies. Don't say they've been the most banged up team in history. The Ja Morant stuff was, is annoying for sure. Desmond Bain's ankle injury was annoying. The rest is fake. Well, Steven Adams' injury is real, obviously, but like that happens. Everything else is not real. It's highly exaggerated. Today's episode is brought to you by Banjul. It is playoff time in the NBA and the NHL coming up. Baseball, we're full swing there, and Banjul is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That is $150, win or lose. You can bet on everything. Slap shots, home runs, the old um, self alley-oop off the backboard that your teammate then teabags you from behind, slam dunks. You probably can bet on those. Not that that would ever happen in an NBA game, but that's an opportunity there too. You can do all of this on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Go to fanjuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Fanjuel, America's number one sportsbook, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Still no real word on where the Jonte Porter investigation is going, but I would feel pretty confident in saying that he's never playing again. Detroit and Dallas. This is a back-to-back for Detroit. I We know that Cade Cunningham, shockingly enough, has been ruled out with injury management for Thursday. Who could have seen that coming? We're not going to get a um, an early call here on Cade, but there is zero chance that he is playing. I went ahead and said, I think that Kyrie Irving and, and Luka Doncic are going to be doubtful for this game. Kyrie has already been ruled out for rest. Makes sense. They're locked into the game against the Clippers in the matchup. Then they probably can't get into the four. They're going to stay in the five. A Pistons team is never going to win. Um, so Kyrie is out. Luka is listed questionable. I wouldn't be shocked if, if Luka... I think Luka probably sits this one as well, to be honest. And we know from uh, Jason Kidd that Derek Lively is out, at least for the regular season. So Detroit's coming in on a back-to-back. But with Kyrie out and with Luka maybe out, Tim Hardaway, Jaden Hardy, Dante Exum, they're all going to get boosts. Tim Hardaway has been trash outside of the first three or four weeks of the year. Let's see if he's able to put something together here. And then for the Pistons, I don't know about Tosan Eb11, whether he's able to return from these G League games that he's had to play that don't exist because he's run out of games. So Metu's the guy that we're looking at. Of course, Sasser and uh, maybe Malachi Flynn get a little bit more there. And then maybe it's Jaden Hardy. Do they go full Hardy? Because in the past when they've had Irving and Doncic out, Hardy has gone off. And there's an opportunity there, but they could also run with Exum and Josh Green returns as well. So Jaden Hardy, maybe, maybe Jaden Hardy. Houston and Portland. Hard to know a lot about this. Both of these teams are coming into this one on a back-to-back. Out of nowhere, Delano Banton popped up as questionable for Thursday's game with an ankle sprain, so I'd have to suggest there's a risk that he misses at least one of the two, whether that's Thursday or Friday, I don't know. And again, I'll just go out and live and say that Jeremy Grant will be out. They finally, yesterday, did not list him as doubtful. They listed him as out. So I'm going to suggest that he's out on Friday, but just tell us that he's done for the year. Like you haven't told us about Simons, or you haven't told us about Thibel, or you haven't told us about Brogdon. 
who has not played since before the trade deadline. And I cannot believe these clowns did not trade him. All these guys remain out. There's no change there apart from maybe Banton being out. I want to see... Like, Amen Thompson's getting a boost, but I want to see the boost. Is it to 27 minutes? Or does he only play 30-plus if Whitmore is out? Because that has literally been the pattern. Well, for Portland, if Banton's going to be out, you are going to get a lot more Rayan Rupair. And out of the Rayan Rupair and Chris Murray combo, I'm a little bit more interested in Rupair because he's got more assists upside. But both Rupair and Murray are going to continue to start, and there's more opportunity for them and the other guy you want to watch for. We haven't really seen it yet, but there is going to be a Justin Manea legacy game coming, maybe on Sunday. He can do it. He'll play a 48-minuter on Sunday, Justin Manea. Just watch out for the big fella there. The Pelicans, the Warriors. Again, this is a little bit hard. Now, both these teams do actually have something to play for in terms of seeding and the Warriors trying to push to get out of the 9, 10, and into the 8. Pretty tough to do. They both play here on Thursday, though. Brandon Ingram is out on Thursday, as is Larry Nance. So I'm going to say Nance for personal issues. Ingram is returning, you would say, either Friday or Sunday. So maybe it's this one. Nance, a chance to play as well. Najee Marshall, questionable. Now, yesterday, when the Warriors put their injury report out, they had no one on the injury report. And then, of course, Draymond Green and Clay Thompson have been ruled out. Late additions to the report. What a shock that is that they're, they're out. That makes me think that like, Draymond and Clay will be back for this one. Um, and Gary Payton is still questionable for Thursday as well, so he might sit. But you would have to think, if Draymond and Clay are sitting one half of the back-to-back, that Steph and Chris Paul have to be at some level of risk of sitting. I know Steph just rested. But depending, again, how results go on Thursday, there might be no need for Steph to play in this one and just get ready and rolling for the play-in. So we have to have a level of concern on Draymond, Clay, Steph, and Paul, although I think Green and Clay will play because they're already sitting out on Thursday. This is what I hate about this point of the year. We have to try and guess through these motivations of fake injury reports. So the guy's getting boosted is Dyson Daniels, I believe, in New Orleans. Uh, but watch, because Ingram could return and screw that up. For the Warriors, there's someone going to get boosted. I just don't know. Is it going to be Pajemski? Maybe, but it could be Moses Moody. It just depends on who's in and who's out, which we don't know at this point. The second last game is Phoenix up against the Sacramento Kings. The Suns made a very, very important change last game. Royce O'Neal started over Grayson Allen. Now, I'm not a massive Royce O'Neal guy. He's very inconsistent, but if he's going to play 36 minutes a night, he is absolutely usable. You grab him and you play him. For the Kings, they're on a back-to-back. The only injury we know at the moment is Keegan Murray is questionable for Thursday, so he might be questionable for Friday. Damian Lee remains out for Phoenix. So O'Neal's getting the big boost, and we know Keon Ellis gets the boost in Sacramento, but we know that is also fraught with danger. Would he play 32 minutes? Could he play 18 minutes? Could he score 20 points? Could he score two? All of these things are in play for Keon because of the way that old mate Mike Brown runs that rotation. The last game of the day is another one that could be just disgusting. Honestly, it is Utah and the Clippers. I don't believe we have an official injury report for the Jazz, but I'm going to go ahead and try and preempt what the injury report is. Actually, it's a, it's a back-to-back. We definitely don't have one because it's a back-to-back. What we do know is that Sexton, Collins, Kessler, Clarkson, and Dunn are all out on Thursday. And I'll go out on a limb and say they'll all be out on Friday as well. I just sort of, I'll just make an estimation of that. The Clippers are a little bit harder. They are, like we talked with Dallas, they're locked into a 4-5 matchup against the Mavericks. So I really do not think that there is any shot of Kawhi Leonard playing in this game. So I'm listing him doubtful. James Harden's dealing with a foot injury. He was limited on Sunday. He's missed Tuesday. He's missed Wednesday. I think Harden sits this one. Now, last game, they also rested Zubats, George, Powell, Westbrook, and Mann. I think all of those guys return, but I would not be shocked if Paul George sits as well. But I think they all return here and they play limited minutes. So we do want to watch Westbrook because he's going to have a big opportunity against this team. And the thing we want to watch for Utah, or the guy that's been getting the boost has been Lucas Luka Sharmanich. But man, who knows? What if they go to Darius Baisley? What if it's John Jujang time? There is so many absolute spuds on this team who are going to be given minutes. But Sharmanich is probably sitting in an okay spot. Disgusting. Let's talk about Yahoo points. Who can we stream in for a Yahoo points league? with what we currently know at the moment. As I say this, the Blazers have just released their official injury report, so let's take a look at it. It's actually just their official injury report for Thursday, and there's no update with Banton still being questionable. So that is just absolutely unhelpful. So thank you, Portland. Um, Again, we're looking at the capitalized players being 40% available, the regular fonted players being 50% available, and the italicized players being 70% available. So Yahoo points with things how they currently sit. I've got Russell Westbrook. I've got Scott Pippen. 
who's a low rostered player. Then we go Sandra Mamakalishvili with no Kelden Johnson, who actually playing next to Victor Wembanyama, I think helps him. He really struggled last game with no Wemby. You've got Trace Jackson Davis there, Jordan Goodwin, and I am big into Noah Clowney. I hope the big fella does not let him down. Me down. He's going on the cover image for this show, which you've already seen. Fingers crossed. For ESPN, we are going Scott Pippen, um, Westbrook, Jackson Davis, Mamakalishvili. Peyton Pritchard, and again, Noah Clowney. What should we call Noah Clowney? The Joker? The Joker. The Joker, Noah Clowney. I like it. I, I saw Jared Johnson. You know, Jared Johnson used to work at Roto World, big fantasy guy. Been on the show many times. He had a tweet talking about how it's time we all admit that The Joker was actually a bad movie and shouldn't have a sequel. And I know everyone seemed to love The Joker, um, but us here in the Mew Male fraternity, that movie was terrible. I thought it was so bad, The Joker. And yeah, I definitely won't be watching The Joker too. But the first one was bad and I cannot wait for you guys to fight me. Lucky we don't have many people that are watching at this point of the year. So there's not going to be many of you to argue, but drop it in the comments. Tell me why I'm wrong. The Joker was trash. It was bad. Anyway, points, category leagues. Did I even talk about ESPN? I don't even think I did. I think I got caught up. Uh, no, I did talk about ESPN. Josh, you are on track. If you're talking category leagues, what are we doing? Who are we... Um, we actually just got a report here that Brandon Ingram is expected to return on Sunday. There you go. So not on Friday. So at least we've got that update. So category leagues. Same capitalization, italicization remains. I've got Tim Hardaway Jr. at the top there because Kyrie is out. We knew that. And I expect that Lucas sits as well. So I think Tim's got a real shot at being a good point stream guy. It could be completely useless though. I've got Keontae George for the shallower formats. I've got G Scoot not um, eligible for this anymore because he has hit 60% rostered. So Keontae George for points. I've got GG Jackson, who that's all he does. Got Scotty Pippen and Jake LaRavia because everybody is out in Memphis and people have to score. And Corey Kispert as well, who again remains bad, but can put up numbers and plays 40 minutes a night. For threes, we are going to Leaky Beasley. There's no Dame. There's no Giannis. So Leaky, despite struggling, is going to have... Look, he can hit nine threes. He probably won't, but he can hit nine. Slam and Sammy Hauser with my expectation that quite a few Celtics sit on Friday. I've got Tim Hardaway there. I've got Corey Kispert there. Uh, we've got Keontae George as well as a good three-point streamer. And then Peyton Pritchard. So it's a very obvious fill-in type of players there, like Beasley, like Hauser, like Timmy, and like Pritchard, plus the guys getting big minutes on bad teams like Kispert and Keontae George. For rebounds. This guy can really kill you in the percentages, but Jabari Walker is a big rebound guy. Omi Yurtseven, I'm guessing, is starting for the Jazz. He's had one good game. He can be double digits, but, you know, stuff. Um, Trace Jackson Davis, old mate, the Joker, Noah Clowney, Sandro Mamakilishvili, and Royce O'Neal. I would say those first five names there are all double-digit rebound possibilities, likelihoods, or expectations, while O'Neal's probably a seven-rebound, eight-rebound player with a level of security in his floor. For blocks, I really love what I'm seeing from Noah Clowney, so I love streaming him in for this. He's available like 92% of leagues. Trace Jackson Davis. I am putting Luke Cornett here because I think Porzingis, Horford, and maybe Tillman all sit, so Cornett might play 28 minutes. I've got Trey Jemison there, although the risk is that he's out. Like, they might just chuck a G League tag on him. I do think that'll come Sunday, but watch for that one. John Isaac, who's been disappointing the last three games, but he can always get you two to three. And then the big fella off the bench, Peyton Watson, the new John Isaac. I know that sounds blasphemous, but I think he might be the new John Isaac. Um, Peyton Watson could get you multiple blocks as well. The last big man category we're looking at is field goal percentage. So Jackson Davis is at the top there. Tell what I hate about um, hyphenated names in that like when you've got a name like Jackson Davis, it makes it sound like his name is Mr. Davis, Mr. Jackson Davis. It's like Nikhil Alexander Walker, where like, is his name Alex Walker? Mr. Walker? Like, but there are some that don't work that way. Like Gilgis Alexander, I'm not going to call my, uh, you're not going to call your kid Gilgis, although Chevante is pretty close. But like that one obviously sounds like a hyphenated name. But if I just call him Jackson Davis, it sounds like I'm calling him Jackson Davis, old Jacko. But it's not. Anyway, Trace Jackson Davis. Luke Cornett, good field goal percentage guy. Jim Wiseman, Mason Plumley. Um, the Wiseman one, watch if they sit Duran, which is possible too. Trey Jemison and TJ McConnell if you're looking for a guard. Speaking of guards, let's look at guard stats. Assists. I don't know why TJ is not on my list there, but he should be. TJ McConnell should be at the top of that assist list. But you've got Scott Pippen, you've got Russell Westbrook, Jordan Goodwin, Peyton Pritchard, Vasa Misic, and Keontae George. Remember, every team is playing, and we actually have some really strong double-digit assist upside players. Pippen, Westbrook, Goodwin's probably a seven assist guy, so is Pritchard. Misic is a double digit assist player, and George is like a six to seven guy. So there are actual ways to get big assist numbers in off the waiver wire at this point of the year somehow. For steals, Chemezi Metu, with steals, you can always get zero, but this man can get four. We know this. 
So he's got a really good um, opportunity here. Scott Pippen, good steals guy. Keon Ellis, Russell Westbrook, Javante Green, and Jordan Goodwin. Lastly, we look at free throw percentage. Two names at the top are for shallower leagues. It's DeAndre Hunter and Keontae George. Tim Hardaway for the intermediates. And then we go Chimezi Metu, Dylan Brooks, and Luke Cornett. And that is the end of, of course, a crazy 15-game preview. I hope that a lot of this info holds. I worry that it doesn't, but that's where you stay tuned to Twitter. You check the Basketball Monster news page for everything that's going to happen or maybe going to happen and how we project it all out. It's going to be weird. It's going to be wonderful, and it is going to be wacky. Don't forget to hit the old thumb up, the subscribe, and uh, do the double bang. It's that time of a year where double bangs are all that keeps us together. So go and do that. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.